Hello, what's up? What's happening? Welcome back to the channel today. We're going to be wrapping up the whole entire first year. Bowl game is done. We lost to Texas A&M, but I got a contract extension. This is not a carousel dynasty or anything like that. If I get fired, I just get fired. If they offer me a new contract, I'm going to just take it because we're here to turn this team into a dynasty. The reason why I left this on is because it's going to make me... It's going to force me, basically, to make better choices as far as schedule goes and going after five-stars and four-star recruits, even though this team probably has never had a four-star recruit. Might not have ever had a three-star recruit unless that three-star recruit had, like, academic troubles. I'm just going out on a limb. I don't know that for sure. Don't verify it. I'm just saying. So, USC, they won the national championship. Now, Boise State was number two going into their bowl game. Florida State was number three in the national championship, however that works. And, of course, Florida State lost. So, Boise State finishes the year number two. Shout out to them. Bowling Green, who won our conference, they were the conference champions. They lost to Wisconsin in the bowl game. That's our budget. These are the guys that are leaving. I had a feeling that Jason could leave with seven INTs. One of the best cornerbacks in the nation, first team all conference. I thought that there was a chance that he could leave Go Pro. That does suck, but like I told you guys, with all these dynasties, I kind of just, you know, if you want to bounce, I'm not going to stop you from bouncing. All right, I'm the head coach, I'm the, I'm the athletic director, I'm the head scout, and I'm the broadcaster. So my pockets are okay. You want to get your pockets right? Go down the street, go to the NFL draft, get just. Get your situation the way you want your situation to play out. So we're losing a bunch of guys on defense. Brian, Demon, Gray. We lose our left tackle, so we're going to have to replace him. Uh, Scott, we lose. Bullock, we lose. So all I know is that we got to reload just a little bit. So these are the guys we were able to sign. I went after 25 guys. We're only able to sign, I think, like 15, 16, maybe 17 guys. We get the number one quarterback. We got him earlier. We get the number five tackle. Now, he will eventually probably play left tackle for us, but he is a right tackle. So I may look to move him. I kind of don't want a starting freshman at left tackle because, you know, left tackle protects the blind side. But we will figure things out. The best guys will play. I'm not worried about who's an upperclassman and stuff like that. The best guys will will play so whoever's the highest overall they're gonna get the start the starting nod unless it's just not working out and I'm, i gotta change things up so we also got an athlete a 510 athlete and we got this 61 athlete pen who is a solid athlete but he might be just a flat out beast at quarterback so we might have got two quarterbacks that are dual threat quarterbacks in this recruiting class you're seeing the top classes right here miami's a top 10 class missouri notre dame we got some work to do if we want to get up there because again we did not get even close well we kind of got close but not really the 20 scholarships ohio state only had 17 so maybe it's an ohio thing I'm not sure. It could be a, an Ohio thing where you don't get all 25. Of course, I'm joking. Ohio State's one of the best recruited schools in the history of college foosball. All right. Now, we had a top 65 class right there at 62. We had one five-star, one four-star, one three-star. The rest were just, yeah, we had 12. I was way off. We had 12 scholarships. Which is okay because we have some guys that are returning. We had some decent depth. Not great depth, but some decent depth. These are the number one guys, man. The number one halfback in Ohio did not even go to Ohio State. Ohio State was not even in this top five. Because I wanted to look at it. I wanted to check it out. And it's not him right there. He's from Louisiana, obviously. Um, he's going to Texas a and I hope we don't see Texas A&M for a while. Even if it isn't a bowl game. I'm trying to make sure that my team gains confidence. Number 13 overall prospect is Kirkpatrick. And again, he is the number one quarterback. So that says something, man. Um, and again, he may get redshirted. And I know in real life that might be a death sentence with social media. And these high school kids being superstars before they even come on campus and do anything. Um, so that might not be a good idea in real life. But this ain't real life. This is a video game. If he's not better than uh, Haston, he will be redshirted. All right. Dan, he is the running back from Toledo, Ohio. He did not go to Toledo, Ohio State. He did not He did not have any schools in the region, okay, in his top schools that he wanted to go to, all right? So, Brown, I will move him actually to cornerback. He is a free safety. Um, as an athlete, that's his highest overall at 65. But I'm actually going to move him at corner because he's also a 65 overall corner, as you can see. Penn is a 59 overall athlete, but his arm talent was pretty solid. 
So I'm going to move Penn to quarterback. And he's a 72 overall quarterback with 78 speed. I figured that, hey, if Kirkpatrick decides to transfer, which could be a possibility, that we'll, we'll at least have a dual threat quarterback that we can build up and build upon. All right. So these are the guys that did some things in the offseason. You're going to see that, look, Webb is now 80 overall. Quarterback Haskins is 80 overall. Kirkpatrick is also 80 overall. Kirkpatrick has a boost because he's way faster. He's our fastest quarterback on the roster, but his arm talent isn't as good as Mark Haston, who's a junior at 6'6", 240. And I do like to play upperclassmen because composure does matter. Now, hopefully that composure goes up. You know, when we get to the official season, but composure definitely matters, all right? So, you can see that Flores, he had the most improvement going up by four, but he's still not the starting running back. Webb, he has turned himself into our best receiver next to Bishop. Uh, and yeah, here goes the roster, here goes our depth chart. Again, Haston, he's higher than Kirkpatrick, so technically Kirkpatrick is not on the same level. They're both 80 overall, I'm not blind, I can see that, but... They're not at the exact same level. So Haston will probably be our starter. And of course, Kirkpatrick and uh, Penn uh, will both, sorry if I hit my microphone, uh, they will both be um, redshirted because I want to keep these guys in the program as long as possible. Again, if they thought they can go pro, then that's their choice. But it's my choice to redshirt them if I feel like it. So Lee is our third string receiver. Givens is our fourth string receiver. And Pope. 72 overall. He basically did not improve at all. I don't know what he was doing. But this is his fourth year in the program. He's a redshirt junior, so he has one more year to get it right. And, I mean, Pope might play backup tight end. It's not going to be Meadows because Meadows is going to be a starting right tackle, starting left tackle, one of them. Our left tackle right now is 76 overall. He's a redshirt senior, fifth-year senior at 76 overall, huh? I don't know. So we're going to move one of our right tackles over. And you're going to see that right here. Rest of the O-line is also, huh? Right guard is solid. So the right side of our O-line should be pretty okay. So we're going to move Meadows. Meadows will be our Meadows. Why am I saying Meadows? Meadows, he will be our starting right tackle. We're going to move the big fella, 78 red shirt junior okay he is going to be our starting left tackle and i think that's just the best that we can do for this old line and yes we are not going to over you know sell what we can do in our schedule we are going to schedule on our level we're not going to think that we are better than we are and if you get to a bowl game and we beat up on some team that's like a power five team then so be it and then we'll start making some moves according to what we can do in our ball game but regular season huh? defense is going to look a little bit different Different. Williams, probably not going to be our starting left outside linebacker. We have Goff there. We have some couple of other guys. Probably going to be Goff. He's 70 overall with 78 speed. Richardson, he's at 78 overall, but at middle linebacker. Doesn't necessarily have to be the fastest. And he's our backup. We do use four linebackers occasionally, but it's really just a mixture. Four, four, four linebackers, four down linemen. 3-4 at times, 4-3 at times. It's really just a mixed bag of everything we can do defensively. So Holly, true freshman, he is our highest overall uh, cornerback, followed by Stephen Moore, who was playing nickelback for us last year. Morris is coming back. He's first team all Mac at 80 overall. And then we got some new guys at safety. Kicker is a freshman, and our punter is a walk-on. I was not able to recruit a punter. So our schedule looks like this. Arizona, Colorado State, Vanderbilt, those two games on the road. Then Syracuse at home, Ohio at home. So we get all four non-conference opponents out the way in the earlier part of the season. Hopefully we can run the table there. And then we got Bowling Green, Buffalo, and then, of course, Akron to finish up the year. Those zippity doo dah zippity hey. So like I said, man, Charles Penn, he's going to get redshirted. And Ronnie is going to get redshirted again. He's a five-star recruit. Maybe some of you guys are looking forward to watching me use him. But, hey, we're going to have to wait a year at least. If, Pe if Haston is a senior, but he's not better than Kirkpatrick, then, hey, too bad. Maybe I'll be loyal to him if he's like a fantastic quarterback. But, and we know I'm, I'm never the best at no video game. I would never say that. But, like, at the end of the day, if he doesn't, like, have all-conference type numbers, I mean, first-team all-conference then there's probably no reason for me to play him or start him. Start him. Kirkpatrick will be our starter. We could do a, you know, a dual, like a two-quarterback system and stuff like that. I'm not really with that. I like having one quarterback as my guy and so on and so forth. 
Uh, we're going to redshirt that outside linebacker. We're going to go down, probably redshirt Cobb right there. He's 68 overall. If I could have him in for an extra year for a development, that would be a cool move. Probably going to go down and Brown, who was our um, athlete. We're probably going to redshirt him. 65 overall right now as a freshman with 85 speed. Solid numbers, but I think we have four cornerbacks ahead of him that are probably you no know, better. Solid, so we're going to redshirt him as well. Free safety, nobody there that we can register. Both of them are juniors. Not going to register the junior unless it's like a, a position change. Uh, this freshman, he may get registered. I probably will because Ridgeway is the same overall. And he, yeah. So, yeah, you see it. Done deal. That's what it is. So, top 25 polls. You see it. It's the usual suspects. Colorado's top 10. Followed by UCLA and Boise. Iowa State's top 15. That's a big deal. NC State is number 25. Looking for us. Could we be top 50? I don't know. I'm hoping that we could be top, not top 50. Not, okay, dang. Top 100? We are ranked number 90. So, ranked number 90. C's all across the board. Our defense, I believe our defense was a C plus last year. Now it's a C minus. Our offense was in the D's, but now it's a C. So, I will take that. Got some pretty good development from our quarterbacks and receivers. So, I'm excited about that. And this is the outlook for the conference. Northern Illinois, they expect to win. Followed by Toledo, Eastern Michigan, Akron, Bowling Green. Kent State is us, obviously. Then, then Western Michigan, Central Michigan, Miami University, Ohio, Buffalo, and Ball State to wind things out. So that's that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm just joking. We got some recruiting to do. Okay, got some recruiting. We got to do some in-season recruiting before it's all over. So here are the guys we're going after. Couple of receivers, because receivers are going to be leaving. Um, got to fill some holes, obviously. Halfback, I want to get a beast at halfback, so I figured why not. Everybody that I'm going after is pipeline. So I am guess I'm kind of pigeonholing myself with that. Everybody's in the pipeline. So it's out of Florida, who's a pipeline school or state. Georgia, I believe, is also Ohio, uh, PA, obviously. Um, I'm trying to get Indiana to be one. So I'm, I'm working on that. I believe we were able to recruit a couple of guys from Indiana. Uh, and, yeah, I'm looking for like some big, nasty, just big hogs to play O-line and open up some lanes. And hopefully that can work out for us, man. But that will do it for the episode and for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys are looking forward to the brand new season. I'm sorry if you were looking forward to the freshman. But, hey, he is going to be learning the game of college football. I'm out. Peace. Love. Hot sauce.